moving on uh Ooh, i mean we could talk about sit back and talk about this all day but let's move on and let's talk about some of the someone who got deactivated uh and again this the deactivation wasn't even their fault and this is something that you may even and you know I, i'm gonna i'm gonna change something this is where we say show me the money club that's the name of the show when you get deactivated and it's a false claim or something like that it's called show me the proof you have the burden of proof to tell me otherwise i'll take you at arbitration and we'll see who wins yeah uh but yeah so this driver right here uh this was a big story that that came out um, this driver spent $180,000 to start an Uber black business. And then the company deactivated his account. Well, next one, Chris, next one. This is the New York City one. Oh, my bad. Yeah, that one right there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this, yeah, this driver <laughs> uh, made a mistake to start with probably the buying two cars right away. But again, he's an entrepreneur. He started a business. He bought himself a black car to do Uber black. And in fact, I talked to Levy yesterday from Market Watch about the Prop 22 thing that just had passed. And they got involved, Levy got involved, and, and they put the guy back on. But long story short, what happened is that he ended up selling the second car that he bought for his business. Okay. So um, Miguel Abreu, a right haired right hailing driver, bought a Chevy Tahoe for about 80000 last summer, right? That's a year ago. He spent 10000 getting a commercial license, which you have to have for doing Uber Black. Then bought a Mercedes for ninety thousand dollars. Lined up another driver for that vehicle for obviously you know uh, for Uber Black as well. Then in early December, Uber Technologies deactivated his account. Well, that's why. Let's let's see why he got deactivated. Abreu, a uh, Lynn Massachusetts told Market Watch the company kicked him off the Uber app permanently because it suspected he was splitting his account. Meaning, you know, there are a lot of unscrupulous drivers that rent their account or lease their accounts to some other person right the guy wasn't doing anything like that so meaning two people were driving for one account one day uber asked abreu to prove look at this one to prove he was at the airport so he sent the company a photo of himself he was then told the photos metadata showed him as being somewhere else that somewhere else was on an island unreachable by car <laughs> this is a technology company people we just talked about this okay <laughs> pointing to an obvious mistake he said yet after seven years of driving for uber and then black last year he found his account deactivated so he was forced to sell the second car okay but then you know uh, market watch got involved and then abreu is just one of many drivers who faced the activations we talked about this last week brian merchant did an amazing article on algorithms firing people these days okay it's an LA Times article. It's about deactivation. Since that article, I got at least seven emails, people begging me to come forward and talk about their own deactivations. I've, I will have time to talk to all of them this week, hopefully, and we'll probably put you guys on our YouTube channel with an interview. So this issue is common and widespread in enough that some states, such as New York, New Jersey, Washington, that's you, <laughs> have enacted laws that include provisions on deactivation process. Chicago is, on, is coming, Denver is coming, so people hang on, it's, it's happening. It is mentioned in a proposed ordinance in Chicago, there it is, as well as in proposed legislation in Massachusetts. No more unjust deactivations. We will have the, you know our time in court or in front of an arbitrator. The only state in the nation that conducts an additional background check for drivers in addition to the carried out by right-hailing companies. Okay. So while Abreu expressed gratitude about being reactivated, so Uber said, oops, you know, we were wrong. We'll put you back on the system because he went public with his story and uh, Levy did a great job with an article. He said what happened to him was arbitrary and calls for action. Sure does. He said he will continue to support fellow drivers in pushing for proposed legislation in Massachusetts that aims to give drivers collective bargaining power. There you go. So we're all at these crossroads that there are good things happening and we need to keep pushing now now this is the time to push this is not the time to back off we need to keep pushing we need to unite as drivers who does not want unjust deactivation protection raise of hands i want definitely protection mm -hmm. because oh, i will be deactivated yeah. one day for Out sure talking to drivers oh, i've yeah. heard a lot of people were like i don't need that ah oh, i'm a good driver until no, you get it deactivated could happen to anybody yeah. People were just, yeah. your car is parked, someone hits you, and then they, they drop you. Yeah. Or someone wants yeah. to get a free fare, so they said, oh, yeah, he discriminated against me because of, and they drop you. 
you have you know what, to be though, able it's... to pr protect yourself. Oh, absolutely. But but on top of that, we're just gonna let's let's go with this particular uh, instance of deactivation by saying that the metadata was in a different place of than where he was. Well, if you're sitting in your car and it's unreachable by car, don't you think that the picture that you're seeing is is a little bit different? Uh, but not only that, I've gone to different places. I was in Houston uh, one time, and I was sitting in the the arena there. I forget the name of the arena. Not not a matter. But when I went to go check in on Facebook, it was showing me that I was in Bangkok, Thailand. So, and I don't have any GPS spoofing on my phone. And this this was a f couple of years ago too. So it's it was showing me like the map was showing me I was in Bangkok. I'm like, no, I'm in Houston. I'm in Texas. And then um, I was in Baltimore too uh, one time, and taking you know I, I was at a party, and my pictures on my phone currently to this day still show me that the metadata of that particular photo is in Australia, but no, it's in Baltimore. So That's these crazy. things happen all of the time where where there's issues. How many times have you gotten a ride request that comes in and it shows like the east or the western tip of Africa? I've seen that so many times. In fact, we actually had something, uh, I believe, yesterday, uh, or I'm mean, sorry, last week that that showed that same exact error. Uh, I've seen that quite a few times pop through. Um, so all of these different things I've seen uh, when it comes to it. So it, whether it's issues on their end, whether it's issues on you know the phones end, things happen, things change. There's, there's sometimes there's some weird issues and things that are going on, and you can't really help it. So the problem is the burden of proof should be on them especially yeah. when it comes to these false accusations. Oh, my driver's dr appearing drunk or sleepy at the wheel. Prove it. Yeah, they, they also... The, uh, did, the, did the 15 other dry rides that I took before that night, did, were, were they complaining that I was drinking on the job? No. Exactly. Yeah. They and went. The other, you know, the other thing, Chris, that's, that's happened is that um, in Denver, I, I have the screenshots, but I didn't send it to you. You know, the, um, the bill that they're trying to pass has this you know, protection from unjust deactivations, right? Uber is, you know, sending in-app messages completely opposing this idea. The reason they're saying is that there's the privacy of the passenger. Like if there is a sexual assault that took place, why should that passenger go to the court and get more traumatized and more this and more that? Well, what about the other way around, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. fair game. So to me, I think, and they even amended that proposal, by the way, that if you're if you're a sexual assault um, victim as a passenger by a, by an idiot driver, then yeah, you don't have to show up in court and show your face and whatever it is, because in case this this driver wants to get back on the platform, right? Because everybody has to have their day in in, in court. There's one good question here. It says, uh, Sergio, with these laws, will these laws help previously deactivated accounts? Great question. I will find that out for you. Email me, Sergio, at the rideshareguy.com. I am not sure. I will have to look into that. Now, do they do that? I mean, I, I, I'm I, not sure if in, it's going to be retroactive. In Seattle and yeah. Washington, we haven't been able to get them to be re retroactive yet. Okay. And, um, uh, you know, the companies are fighting to, tooth and nail to, to, to okay. not do that, um, yeah. which is, is just upsetting because if we have somebody who can be a good productive driver on the app, why wouldn't we all want them on there? I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And right. then, you know, if, if it's a false claim made, but made by somebody, why shouldn't they be, you know, but, if yeah. they were planning on continuing driving, why shouldn't they be compensated for the time that they did not really do a true investigation into the matter and figure out if it's true or not? And that, that's a critical piece of what we've done in Seattle and now in Washington state is, is the back pay piece of it. And because previously people were waiting 11, 13 months for the arbitration process to happen. And by that point, they lose mm -hmm. their car, they lose their house, every, everything's gone because Uber and Lyft don't have a vested interest in moving it along. They don't care. You're a replaceable cop, replaceable cop. Yeah. So by putting some teeth into the measure, now Uber and Lyft actually has a good vested interest in doing a real investigation and getting you back out there as quickly as possible yeah. rather than letting it run as long as it, they possibly can because well if i don't have to worry about it now maybe i'll never have to worry about it yeah and, well one but, of the hmm. one of the states actually i think it's massachusetts um their proposal uh offers back pay with nine percent interest so um mm -hmm. so there is some there's some you know there is some weight into this game now right you can't just yeah. go willy-nilly deactivate people 
you know, with a with a cheap passenger wanting their six bucks back, right? And and then not pay for it. Now there's going to be some pay involved as well. And I, I wish all these states that are pushing these proposals have the same, you know, some sort of a ruling. And Chris has a great idea, actually. It was last week, I think we talked about it, right? With the LA Times story. It says, you know, the, then the driver should be able to take the, the passenger who put a, you know, fraudulent claim, uh, you know, back to court, like into civil court, you know, mm-hmm. for, for defamation or for whatever it is, right? You, you lost, I lost my job. Because you lied yeah. to the system, I th- and the system could, picked it yeah. Up. yeah, I, I absolutely, yeah, something like that should be should be allowed. And yeah. I mean, there's there's no way. I mean, you could do that potentially if you really had to. Yeah. Uh, there's no nothing in the w- way. But I mean, something if it's in that case, if if there's a deactivation and it's found to be unjust, I think that uh, the person should be held liable who who is the person or at least partially liable. And then these companies, because they're not doing, they, they should also be in, involved in that. Um, because the whole thing is they're the ones who are allowing that to happen on their platform and they don't care one way or the other because they're like, oh, another driver will just take that uh, next time. Yeah. And it's like, that, that doesn't make any sense. It's like both yeah. parties have to be held responsible because then it's going to stop and it's going to end. Um, so yeah, something like that should be in place. I mean, yeah. look at Tennessee. They just put in, in a law into effect that if a drunk driver kills a parent, they owe child support. So, I mean, something like that, that is, that is the same type of thing here when it comes down to taking away their livelihood uh, of a driver who's deactivated because you don't want to pay the $24 to go from point A to point B and you think you're cool, something like that. No, that that's fucking with people's dry, livelihood there. All right. Thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me The Money Club with Sergio and myself. Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.